And now, for our feature presentation. Hello, Internet. Welcome back to the show where I talk about my movie nights. Um, last time I did a Bruce Lee triple feature, and um, all three of these movies were on Amazon Prime. So I already had this triple feature planned, because I'm like, oh look, Big Boss, Fists of Fury, Enter the Dragon, they're all on Amazon Prime. I love Enter the Dragon. Need to watch some more Bruce Lee movies. So I had already planned this triple feature. And then Criterion announced this. The the Bruce Lee, his greatest hits box set. And I'm like, why you gotta do that to me, Criterion? Because I knew I probably couldn't afford this. Thank God for the Barnes & Noble... 50% off Criterion sale, because I got this box set for $65. And for a box set that contains five movies and two, two Blu-ray discs worth of bonus features. Look at this. There's two bonus feature discs. Um, $65 is a really good price. I had this triple feature planned, and I sort of delayed it a little just because I wanted to get this before I talked about the Bruce Lee films and I'm kind of glad I did since I got it for such a nice price and it's such a nice box set like how can you it's it's Criterion Bruce Lee how could I not um so we talked about Enter the Dragon his most famous film and then Big Boss and Fist of Fury uh, two other very popular films from him. This also includes Way of the Dragon and Game of Death. I'm not so sure how I feel about these other two selections. Um, because I've seen Way of the Dragon and it's not that great. Uh, except the end fight scene between Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris. That scene is amazing. Do yourself a favor, just look that scene up on YouTube. You can skip the rest of the film. That scene's the only one worth watching. It does mean this is the first Chuck Norris movie in the Criterion collection. So that's nice. I guess I'm happy about that. And I mean, if you're doing Bruce Lee's biggest hits, that's, that is one of them. Game of Death, I question, because uh, basically this director shot a bunch of footage for a Bruce Lee movie... And then Bruce Lee died before he could finish it. And then, like, five years later, he's like, Let me finish this Bruce Lee movie I started. And everyone was like, No, don't. That's kind of insulting to Bruce Lee. There were, like, a bunch of people who turned down roles in that movie because they're like, No, nah, that's kind of disrespectful to Bruce Lee. Chuck Norris was one of them. Also, um, at, like, Muhammad Ali turned down a role in the movie. Because he thought it was disrespectful to uh, Bruce Lee. So, I don't know why you would include that in your Bruce Lee's great... I mean, I guess it was one of his most popular films, but... Bruce Lee was not actually in that many movies. And even then, he starred in way fewer. He kind of played background characters for a while. Um, like, his first movie, he's in, like, one scene... He, he destroys a guy's office with karate and then gets kicked out a window. But I like it. It comes... Uh, I like the box set. Um, I really like this art. I hope they do, like, a poster or something. I would buy a poster of this artwork. Um, it comes with this little... The, the booklet made to look, I guess, sort of like a fanzine or something. And... Yeah, inside it's got all this information. It does say on the cover, you have full color poster inside, but like, let me show you the posters. There they are. It's just, I don't know, you'd have to like, cut out just the poster. And this one doesn't even say Enter the Dragon. These all have their Chinese titles. Um, but they're all like really tiny. Uh, we started with Enter the Dragon, which most people I uh, don't think know. Enter the Dragon's an American movie. 
it was not a... Because you think, like, you know, Bruce Lee is Chinese. Kung Fu movies were Chinese. But uh, Enter the Dragon, probably the most popular Kung Fu movie of all time. It was made by Warner Brothers. It was an American release. They even advertised it as, like, the first big Kung Fu movie from an American studio. So... That's wild. It also, you know, it's got some American actors in it. It's got, uh, John Saxon. John Saxon of, um, Nightmare on Elm Street fame. That's probably what he's most famous for. He's in a lot of movies. He's a good actor. I like John Saxon. Enter the Dragon is about this opium dealer who who lives on an island and has, like, a kung fu tournament every... I, I don't recall how often he has the kung fu tournament but occasionally he will have a kung fu tournament on his island where he makes opium and it it's sort of just uh like a front to bring new people into his business like he tries to get john saxon in on it um and bruce lee is tasked by the american government to go out to this island and investigate, find out what's going on there, um, and if possible, kill the bad guy. So it's a, it's a Bruce Lee spy movie, which is kind of weird, because, uh, you, you really shouldn't, you're really not cut out for spy work if your fighting style requires you to yell, Hah! every time you hit someone. Which he does, he does that in this movie, he's like sneaking around and he'll like, He's, like, trying to be quiet and sneak around, but then, like, he'll come up on a guard and he'll just, like, yell as he's hitting the guard. I, I do think there is evidence to back up that you hit, like, a little harder if you're yelling while you do it. Don't hold me to that, but I'm pretty sure there is evidence that that helps. Like, just a little. But that, uh, the fact that it's, it is more of, like, a spy movie and he, he's got this mission and it, it does make it unique among kung fu movies because truthfully i'm not a huge fan of kung fu movies a lot of them sort of blend together for me they're all very similar there's a lot of like uh we the good karate school have to defeat them the bad karate school and not that that's always bad there are a few good movies that use that plot but like <sighs> It's, it's really repetitive, and I, I feel like the action scenes can go on, like, way too long. Like, uh... Like, I've seen a bunch of Jet Li movies. You could put a Jet Li movie on in front of me that I've seen. Put on a Jet Li movie that I have seen, and I would not be able to tell you which one it is, because they are so interchangeable. Um, the only one I really like is Hero. I'll give Hero props. Hero is good. But other than that, like, a lot of Jet Li movies just aren't very good. They're all sort of samey to me. So I'm not, I'm not huge on kung fu movies, but, uh, I, I do like the kung fu movies that go a little outside the box, and Enter the Dragon definitely does that. I would say Enter the Dragon is probably, like, way up there in terms of kung fu movies for me. At least... Mm, at least as far as, like, bare-knuckle kung fu movies go. Because sometimes, sometimes they'll have a sword, and that's a little more like a samurai movie to me than a kung fu movie. Um, I do, I do prefer it when they, like, use a weapon and are allowed to kill people. Although, shockingly high body count on Enter the Dragon for what are mostly unarmed kills. Like, a lot of people die from unarmed kills. <laughs> it's it's a fun movie, it's an amazing, enjoyable, very unique kung fu movie. I really enjoy it. I really like Enter the Dragon. Absolutely worthy of its status as, like, one of the best-known kung fu movies of all time. Definitely the best-known Bruce Lee movie. Um, totally deserving of all that. I would argue probably his best film. Although, again, I, ha I haven't seen that many Bruce Lee movies. But also, you know, there aren't really that many Bruce Lee movies. So, I would argue his best film. 
at least of the handful I have seen. After that, we watched Big Boss, and I also really loved Big Boss. Um, it's it's also it's another one that's pretty outside the box. In fact, it has a lot of similarities to Into the Dragon. Um, Big Boss was a Chinese film. Uh, was made in China. Uh, and I did watch the Chinese version with subtitles rather than the American dub. Big Boss is about uh, a bunch of guys who work at, like, an ice factory. And it turns out that, like, the ice factory is smuggling heroin inside the giant blocks of ice. And some workers find out about it, and the boss kills them. And ba basically, the boss has been offing anyone who gets in the way of his heroin dealing. And uh, that in that happens to include a couple of Bruce Lee's friends and even, like, uh, like his brother or maybe his cousin, I forget. A relative of his who was the one who got him the job at the ice factory. So he starts poking around and uh, that causes a lot of trouble with, like, the boss and his minions and Bruce Lee has to fight all of them. Um, really good. Really good movie. Really enjoyable movie. There's, there's an interesting, entertaining plot. Uh, it fully justifies Bruce Lee beating up people constantly throughout the movie. Uh, very fun. Very enjoyable. Very bloody. It's like... The prob one of the bloodier kung fu movies I've seen. Probably the bloodiest Bruce Lee movie there is. Um, cause, you know, when you're just, like, punching people, sure, that, that can get bloody, but there's a lot of blood in this film. There was, like, a scene that got cut out, uh, initially for, like, being too violent. He, like, slams someone's head into a buzzsaw, and that got cut out. I don't think it was in the version I watched. I, I, it kinda, he, like, shoves him at the buzzsaw, and then it cuts away. And you just hear, like, oh, like the guy's getting killed by the buzzsaw. So, um, spoilers for Big Boss, if you have not seen it. Uh, near the end, right before the climax, like, Bruce Lee has, like, beaten up a bunch of this guy's dudes. So, he sends people to Bruce Lee's house and, like, kills Every single one of his friends and his family and, like, his love interest and and her family. And it's like, that's so excessive. That is, like, he's already going to fight, like, beat up the boss. Like, he already has more than enough justification to fight these people. And it's, it's just such overkill for them to throw in, like... And then the boss killed everyone Bruce Lee loved. It's like, ugh. That's so excessive. That's so unnecessary. Very fun. I liked Big Boss. Probably my second favorite Bruce Lee movie. Although, again, I've seen like four. Uh, Into the Dragon, Way of the Dragon, Big Boss, Fist of Fury. I want to say I've seen one more, but I, I can't think of what it is off the top of my head. I might just be thinking of Green Hornet. I have watched a few episodes of Green Hornet. Um, and I have definitely seen the crossover episode between Green Hornet and Batman 66. And that's a fun episode. <laughs> Apparently Bruce Lee was kind of upset because, like, uh, the way it was written, it's like, Batman and uh, Green Hornet encounter and like the Batman's there, there's one scene where the Batman guys win and then one scene where the Green Hornet guys win and Bruce Lee was kind of upset that Robin beat up Kato and it's like yeah yeah Kato definitely could take Robin easy very easy um, and like Bruce Lee and uh Burt Ward, Burt Ward, who played uh, Robin, like, lived in the same apartment building. They were good friends. It's a good episode. You know, in, in China, uh, they showed the Green Hornet show, but they renamed it to the Kato show. 
because the Chinese people are like, what? Why is why is Green Horn at the main character? Kato's better. Kato's a better fighter, and it's true. Kato is a better fighter because it's Bruce Lee. It's fucking so you got you got the Green Hornet, and he's just like you know ham fisted, you know Batman style action, and then you bring in Bruce Lee, and li- they had to tell Bruce Lee like, slow down. We can't catch like all the moves you do on camera. He would, like, hit people and it wouldn't show up on camera because he did it too fast. Bruce Lee was great. Bruce Lee was one of the greatest. He he was so fucking fast. He, he was... He was insane. They, they had to nerf him for movies. He was... He was too strong for movies. I think he even also said he, he'll do, like, you know, the nunchuck spinning moves. And he has, like, come out and said, like... Don't do that. You're gonna hurt yourself. That's not how you use nunchucks. I just, I'm just playing it up for the screen, you know. <laughs> Anyways, Fists of Fury. Fists of Fury was kind of what I had feared showing two kung fu movies I had never seen before, uh, because it was the we're the good school and we have to fight that bad karate school. I, I do think it sort of worked. I'm kind of half and half on Fists of Fury because uh so basically there's the the master at the school uh Bruce Lee's former master at the school uh has died and Bruce Lee finds out that he was poisoned by some people at a rival Japanese school in town and so he goes out for revenge against the Japanese school. And that story is amazing, and I love it. And then there's a lot of scenes of the Chinese school that Bruce Lee is from sitting around and talking about whether they're going to take action against the Japanese school and how it wouldn't be diplomatically right to take action against the Japanese school and how they could run into problems with the law. And it's a lot of talking. And it's like, I get it. Like, the moral of the story is like, hey, take action. Don't just sit around and talk about taking action. But, like, you could have cut down the talking by a lot. It's It was the longest of the three movies, but it absolutely did not need to be. This movie was like an hour 45, hour 50. It could have been an hour and a half. It probably could have been an hour and 20 minutes. And it would have been a great movie. It's it's entirely too long. It's it's a great hour and 25 minute movie that is an hour and 45 minutes. They needed to cut a lot of this movie. Trim it down. Make it tighter. Make it faster. Because all, all I care about is Bruce Lee beating people up. Those are the scenes that are great. And like, a little bit of cutting back to the guys talking about it is, is fine. You didn't need as much as, as was in this movie. But I, I ultimately, I think I would recommend it. I didn't <clears throat> enjoy enough of it. God, I need a glass of water. Give me a minute. I say give me a minute as if I'm not just going to edit out me getting water. Ultimately, I think I would recommend Fists of Fury. Um, with the acknowledgement that it is a tad long in the tooth. Um, I would I would like it better if it were shorter. But it still works, you know, it's still a good movie. All the good stuff is still in there. It's not, you know, I mean, I I don't want to dump on Way of the Dragon because it has been three or four years since I've seen, it's been a while since I've seen Way of the Dragon. So it might actually be good, like if I revisit it, I might be like, okay, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. But like, you know, those really typical Jet Li movies... That I don't like so much. Fists of Fury is actually a really funny title. Because Big Boss was released in America as Fists of Fury. And then they do another Bruce Lee movie and it's called Fist of Fury. Singular. Singular Fist of Fury. Um, so the American distributor's like, ah, crap, that's what we called the last one. Uh... So they changed Fist of Fury to the Chinese connection for America. I, I I gotta say, Fist of Fury, better title than The Big Boss. So, 
I'll give them credit there. They they made the right choice not calling it Big Boss. It's like, the Big Boss, what does that even mean? What does that refer to? I mean, it makes sense once you see the movie, but it's like, that doesn't invoke, you know, Kung Fu movie to me. That sounds like a 30s gangster film. Although, the Big Boss is the one movie that's directly referenced in the song Kung Fu Fighting. He says, here comes the Big Boss, let's get it on. It, the only film that gets referenced, unless you're me and you swear to God, one of the lyrics is, there was Funky Bill and Ted. There was Funky Bill and Ted. I, I swear that's one of the lyrics in the song. Anyways, that's the Bruce Lee triple feature. I do recommend all three of them. Uh, Enter the Dragon, great movie. Big Boss, great movie. Uh, Fist of Fury, enjoyable. I liked it. Um, so, so last week I obviously asked, what's your favorite Bruce Lee movie? Um, I love Enter the Dragon. Enter the Dragon's probably my favorite. Uh, Henry Koslick seems to agree with me. He said Enter the Dragon was also his favorite. And Lino commented that his favorite is Big Boss. And I, I understand, like... They are both very good films. I, I won't... I, I won't argue with you about... Oh, well, Into the Dragon's so much better. Like, I like them both. They're both very good movies. I don't know. Guess there wasn't that much discussion to be had with such a simple question. But hey, you know. Into the Dragon, Big Boss, good movies. Uh, interesting that the two answers were two of the three movies I was showing. Uh, so, sort of similar to a question I asked very recently, when I, I asked what triple feature would you show, and the only actual answer to that was a trilogy, this week I am asking, what trilogy would you like to see on Map Presents? Just, if I was gonna show three movies from the same franchise, one right after the other, what trilogy would you like to see because tonight we're taking a look at our first trilogy it is yet more uh asian action films uh this time japanese it is takashi maike's dead or alive triple feature uh that's dead or alive dead or alive two birds and dead or alive final not to be confused with DOA, Dead or Alive, the game based on the volleyball movie that, as I recall, is, like, weird as fuck. It's been a long time since I've seen that film. Um, although, uh, I, I had movie nights, bad movie nights with my friends, uh, starting in high school, and one of the first movies we watched was Dead or Alive. I forget if that was the first... Bad movie night, or the second. I think it was the second. So we we had an ongoing thing of, like, video game movies for the first couple. Like, the f first movie night we watched Super Mario Bros. And then we watched DOA Dead or Alive. And then we watched Street Fighter. And then we watched Mortal Kombat. Like, each successive movie night. I'm off topic. Takashi Maike's Dead or Alive, one through three. Um, until next time, have a nice day.